Willkommen in Hamburg. Ein großer und zukunftsorientierter Club. Wir wollen begeistert den Fußball spielen, der unsere Fans mitreißt und vor allem wollen Sie diesen Weg mit uns gehen. Hello and welcome here in Leipzig. It's Friday. And we're here for, well, a special occasion. My name is Matt, I'm from uh, Germany, Leipzig, and I'm not alone. Yeah, good evening. My name's also Matt. I'm from Manchester, England, but joining, uh, joining my, my German equivalent in, uh, in Leipzig this evening. So tonight uh, we are at the Bruno Plache Stadion, uh, a very famous uh, football stadium. We will talk about that later. And uh, we are at a, what is called, virtual game. So it's not a real game, it's a virtual game. And uh, the team, Lok Leipzig, the famous Lok Leipzig, is playing here against the unsichtbare Gegner, as they say in German, which is the invisible opponent. So and there we see the clock, 40 minutes to go until kickoff. So what's this all about, Matt, this uh, uh, virtual game? Well, that's a good question, um, I think. Like a lot of lower league clubs, not just in Germany, but all around the world, I think, um, the coronavirus has hit clubs quite hard, hasn't it? Um, and clubs have uh, turned to various fundraising campaigns to to help out in a difficult time. And Lok Leipzig from Division 4 in Germany um, came up with the idea to sell virtual tickets to a virtual match against the invisible opponent uh, for one euro each. Um, and it's gone quite well, hasn't it? The only problem is that you promised to do something on the 8th of May. Yeah, that's and why we're here. <laughs> so that's why we're here. <laughs> well, yeah, that's correct. And uh, uh, well, it's called Leute macht die Bude for which uh, does, well, uh, translate, I think, uh, excuse my French, uh, fill up the place, people, is that correct? I think that's close enough, isn't it? Fill, fill the place up, people. Brilliant. That's, and that's, that's, the, that's the aim of the, of the game anyway. And I think it went well uh, so far. So we have a look back what happened. So it started on the 19th of March. Um, we're saying, so <laughs> let's go. We have this game. And it went quite well, uh, I must say. So one day, over 20,000 tickets sold, which is quite good, I suppose. As you can see, step by step, various um, various marks being uh, being beaten, uh, various attendance records down the years. Until, as you can see there, they even had to add extra stands to the to the stadium. I wonder if that'll ever happen in real life. Well, uh, <laughs> it's a virtual thing, but it looks quite nice. And as you can see here, so uh, on the twenty third, uh, so only four days in. Uh, the record of this stadium, the attendance record uh, of a lock game or a team before lock was broken. Then another one over 68,000 against Barcelona back in the 80s. We will talk about the history of that magnific magnificent club later on. 78,000. It, um, it escalated a lot quicker than I thought, honestly, um, Matthias, if I'm being honest. Um, I'm not sure if you were more confident. <laughs> yeah. Ah, and there we can see Maradona. Maybe one or two people might recognize him in 1988, which was the last European Cup game for Lok Leipzig and the last attendance in the Central Stadium, which it was called. Um, so record after record. And now we see the next virtual stand and, well, the next mark, 100,000 people, which is actually uh, uh, the well record for a German game, a league game in Germany, and as you can see, the BBC even uh, reported on that. So You know you've made it, Matthias, when the BBC are getting in touch. Yeah, I think a lot of people got in touch, and uh, and there you can see the ticket for the 1987 record game when Locke played Girondor Bordeaux in the European Cup semi-final. We will come to that later as well, because that is the record mark of Locke Leipzig, um, well, the, ever, the biggest crowd they've ever had or we ever had and there we go on the 11th of april we just yeah got it so it's crazy and it still is so it's still going on and as you can see all over the world people are buying tickets and uh, donate for this uh, very good reason i think how did you manage to get someone in china to buy a ticket matthias actually a good question uh i don't know the names of the people and where they live obviously but i can only tell you that uh yeah. The support's been incredible, really, hasn't it? We obviously, obviously have got fans there, and you see the European record is ours as well now. Well, the virtual European record, 
and uh, it still goes on. So uh, the German that was a record from 1937. You said, wasn't it? Scotland yeah. against England Sc- at Hampden. Yeah, in the so, so, so yeah we we did quite well. As you can see in Germany, football fans from all colours, all different clubs, uh, rivals, uh, donated money and sent messages. Said, uh, "Brilliant, what you are doing. That's great. That's fantastic. That's creative and all that." So yeah, it was heartwarming as well in these well times of uncertainty, if you can say that. So yeah, a big success you can say, and uh, that's why we're here and uh, watching a well, how can I put it, odd game. <laughs> I've, I've a, a virtual game, but um, we're looking forward to some action on the pitch later, I believe. <laughs> And if you're now interested uh, to uh, buy tickets, you can still do that uh, until half time. So get on the Lock Fanshop website, you'll find it. And then you can buy one, two, three, maybe more tickets. So that's up to you. Yes. Yeah, every euro helps, I think. Um, over well, the amount that's been raised so far is absolutely vital for a, for a club in, uh, in, an, in what is effectively an amateur league. Um, yeah, that's not just the case in Germany. That's the case everywhere. That uh, clubs need every penny they can yeah, get. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And uh, the only missing, well, I don't know if you can say person, is the um, the official mascot of Lok Leipzig, which is called Loki. It's a lion, and I think we have a camera on him. Yeah, there we can see him. It's the one on the left, with no top on, and he's at the zoo, I think. So, Loki. In 90 Minuten bist du wieder da. Tammy und ich will sagen Tschüss. Okay, so the director of the Sue Leipzig, is that the correct word, uh, said goodbye to Loki because he obviously lives in the Leipzig Zoo. Where else? He's a lion. He's been in lockdown, has he? In the zoo for a few yeah. days. <laughs> of course. And if one or two people uh, of you have never been to Leipzig. If you come here and if times are normal or back to normal, go to that place because people say uh, it's one of the most beautiful zoos in the world, I would say even. So I don't know if you can say that, Matt. I must admit, I've never actually been to the zoo in Shame Leipzig. Shame on you. But I'll, uh, Shame it, on you. I'll add it to my list. I'll <laughs> add it to my list on the next visit. But I can honestly say, and a, a lot of friends, uh, they say it is brilliant. Uh, it's worth a visit. Come here, Leipzig. I mean, the town itself, the city is, is brilliant, but the zoo especially is nice. So, um, but it's only eight minutes until kickoff. So I'm not sure if he's going to be here on time. Our mascot. Well, he's not that focused. Yeah, he's. he's He's pushing it for time a little bit, if we're being yeah, honest. Yeah, time management is not his thing, I guess. So, yeah. But that's it. Um, yeah, what to expect from, from tonight? I'm, I'm not sure, actually. Cause, uh, well, we're, we're, still, we're still waiting for team news, aren't we? Uh, so I think we'll have, a, we'll have a better idea of what to expect when the, uh, when the line-ups arrive. Um, I think we didn't we send some scouts to check out the invisible opponent today, but I'm not sure if they managed to see much. That's uh, I think I think that's the problem. That's uh, what, what I've heard from from staff, from from manager, and from, from all that. And there we, there you, there you can see there's the starting eleven of Lok Leipzig, uh, which is obviously a four two three one. Yeah, really, really strong spine to the team. Obviously, Robert Zicker as captain, uh, centre back, protected by Solevsky and Wolf there. There's a lot of pace up front as well with uh, Jamal Ziana and Stefan Vibudalu. Uh, that, that, that could cause some oh, problems. I hope so. And uh, during this season, until it was stopped, uh, there was only one game uh, Lock lost this season. So it's a strong team and uh, we're on top of the league, almost. So. I'm quite confident. Oh, <laughs> confident. So we can see now the uh, invisible opponent, and as we expected, not much to see really. So yeah, they're so hard to read. Yeah. They always they always keep their, they're well known for keeping the cards close yeah. to the chest. So, and uh, is it a dark horse? Is it not? We we don't know. So yeah. So obviously it'll be a surprise to see uh, to see how they actually line up and to see how Locke deal with that. Yeah. I'm, so I'm, I'm not sure it's going to be a confident win, but I hope so. But I'm, I'm really, really not sure. But I can spot some potential gaps <laughs> in the back there. <laughs> Let's hope so. And uh, we're back 
with our mascot Loki. So he's in city center. That's what what I can see. And there, yeah, the Lock Fan Shop. Uh, um, I think I know what he's going to do because uh, he's topless at the moment, and this is not appropriate. So there he is inside. And as you can see, because the shop is closed at the moment, you can buy online, and then you get delivered. So well, good news. So, but there's still no shirt because. I don't know the, the regulations at the moment in German uh, stadiums, but I think without the shirt, can you go inside? Is that possible? Uh, you're asking the wrong person there, Matthias. I certainly wouldn't be uh, going to games uh, without, without, my, without my top on. So. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, maybe there are some, some fans <laughs> who would. Some Bruce <laughs> fans are well known for that. <laughs> Not naming any names. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ah, but uh, he, he forgot an essential thing, just paying the bloody thing. <laughs> yeah, we can't, can't be handing out shirts for free, no, can we? No, um, I mean, it's, it's League 4, so it's not, not like, uh, well... Good, good to see that contactless payment has arrived in yeah. Leipzig. That's not, that's not a given in yeah, Germany, it's... but, um, you know, it's... It's modern times. Yeah, obviously, you have to, yeah, you have to avoid contact with, with the coronavirus, so that's good to yeah, see. Yeah, I mean, we're... We know what to do. Uh, problem still is, I mean, two minutes thirty until kickoff, and he is in city center. I mean, Leipzig is not a, a vast town, but I don't think he can make it into a kickoff. Mm, not, not. He'll have to get a move on on the tram. I'm sure he'll get the tram at some point, Billy. Or how's he going to get to the ground? Yeah, I hope we'll see because we've got our cam on him or on him all the time. So let's see what's what's going to happen. And uh, well, only two minutes uh, until kickoff. So uh, we'll talk about um, this magnificent wooden main stand later on because uh, in two years time, in 2022, it's going to be 100 years old, the whole ground. The whole ground is, uh, well, very historic and this wooden main stand is said to be one of the oldest in the world. We don't know 100%, but we're pretty sure it is one of the oldest. So, yeah. Is it safe, is it safe to say that it's the oldest wooden football stand still in use in in germany or? i think in germany it is even in europe but yeah. and I, that's that's good enough for me <laughs> so and then uh well, only 130 to go so we're very close and we see or not see <laughs> the players i think i think i think that's the opponents yeah yeah, up, yeah they're, they're, they're coming out for a pretty much warm-up they're coming out onto the pitch and there's only only one minute to go and uh, the virtual stands are bouncing the real stands as you can see are not really so but virtually 160,000 it's, uh, it's yeah. filling up oh, yeah I mean that, that was uh, I think on Tuesday there was 165,000 tickets so this is this is crazy so we don't know what's happening this second because as I said before you can still buy tickets until half time so do it I mean as you can see it is for example, to, to, to save this uh, main stand for another, I don't know, 100, 150 years. We'll see about that. And then 30 seconds, there will be the kickoff. And I think there's going to be a surprise because a special person is going to deliver the kickoff. But I don't want to don't want to spoil it for you. So we have another another 20 seconds. I don't know, Matt, if you you know who it is. Um. I think I'm aware of who the uh, who the who the person is. Yeah, and um, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> perhaps best not to say oh. too much. <laughs> so there we go, and there he is. There you go. It's the Minister President of Saxony, which is like well, the king of Saxony nowadays in a democracy. If you, the king, the the king of Saxony. Yeah, if there would be a monarchy wow. in place, still he would be the king, but it's not. <laughs> An important person, yeah. though. So I don't are, obviously, as we know, there are sixteen states in Germany. Saxony is one of them, and uh, Mr. Kretschmer is the oh, is the minister. There's president. the first chance. And here we go. There we go, and there's the fit. Stefan Verbudelu oh. cutting inside. Oh, he's gone for the top corner, but he's not quite got it yeah, right. Yeah, the finish wasn't that clinical, I must say, but a good start. Well, we've been saying we have been saying all season that he needs to work on his final product, and uh, yeah, did... I think we can see we can see there why he's a he's a pacey player, he's a he's a tricky player, but doesn't always make the right decision at the end. But still, first minute, first big chance, so 
Um, oh. Yeah, and here, here he goes again down the left. So they've got definitely problems in defense there. And he shoots again. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> young, young, young Stefan really does need to work on his finishing. Yeah. Um, he's been told this all season, <laughs> but he, he needs to keep a calm Well, head. up to the finish, he's really good. I mean, he played here as a youth player, so uh, he learned it all. And then he went on to the likes of like 1860 Munich. I mean, you, you know them, them guys. And then he came back last summer to play for Locke again. And uh, yeah, apart from finish, <laughs> he's a very good lad. <laughs> But he's obviously he doesn't get his head down, and uh, I'm sure he'll uh, I'm sure he'll keep trying because obviously the the opposition right back is nowhere to be seen. And there he's in for the for the third time. There we go. Again, again down the again, left. Again, he's closer now. He's he's got to finish it this there time. There we go. Oh, well done. First goal. Well finished. Brilliant. Lock Leipzig won. The invisible opponent nil. There we go. Yeah, nice touch. I'm pleased for him because he didn't let his head get down after those first two misses. Genau, Chef, I'm oh, we're here for him now. Super thing. Meine Fresse, wie hast du denn den so schnell gemacht? Ja, den Gegenspieler habe ich total nass gemacht. Der hat mich gar nicht gesehen. So schnell war ich. Super. Dann weiter geht's, Jungs. He's weiter geht's. Asked, uh, how did how did you manage that? And he says, I left the defender in my way. I didn't, he didn't see me at all because I was so quick. Um, I, I don't think we saw the defenders there either, if we're being yeah. honest. But um, yeah, keep keep it up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's confident. That's uh, very important for for someone who wants to score goals and, uh, and a, a good early lead. Yeah, I, mean, I, I didn't expect that, but it's it's brilliant. It's a nice start to the game, but still, I mean, because a long way to go. Yeah, a long way to go, and we all know we are into football one or two days, so that can still change or will quickly change. So let's hope we keep the pace up. There we see striker Ziana with a with a with a ball out wide. There you go. Ball comes back. Oh, great finish! Brilliant finish. So fourth minute, Lock Leipzig two takes it. The invisible opponent nil. Ted fucking really well. Mali, du rastest aus. Wir rasten aus. Doppelschlag nach vier Minuten zwei Wie hast du denn das gemacht? Ja, eigentlich wollte ich nicht jubeln, nice aber zu dem gegebenen Anlass habe ich mal gejubelt, denn für mich ist das so Alltag, to match. Ähm, Briefträger jubelt halt auch nicht, wenn er einen Brief einwirft. <laughs> Dankeschön. He said something funny. I think, Matt, you have to translate this. He said he, said he, said he didn't want to celebrate under the circumstances and that it's actually just another day at the office for him. And after all, the, the postman doesn't celebrate when he delivers a letter. So, Jamal Ziana in confident mood. Um, as he would be, the longest serving player at Lock. He's been there since 2014, yeah, I believe. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he's just doing his job. So, yeah, and confident too. And he's also, he's... Also, yeah, sorry. also good to see Lock playing some long balls there, long passing. Obviously keeping the social distancing. Yeah. So that's important. So um, not too much Tiki Taka. I think in the current situation, long balls are the way to go. I'm not sure if Tiki Taka is uh, even <laughs> in normal situations, the style we could play. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we won't discuss this because it's 2-0 and it's uh, yeah, not, 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 not even five minutes in. So... I'm, a really I'm, good I'm, start. I've, I've, we've, we've seen nothing so far from the yeah. opposition. But how's uh, how, how's how's positive? Lockie getting on? Well, we'll see. So there there is the Lockie cam again. So he is uh, um, thinking at the Leipziger Volkszeitung, which is the original newspaper of Leipzig for now, I don't know, 130 years, I think, or 120 years. So also very old. And uh, well, he's doing a lot of stuff, dancing around. So I mean, he needs to be focused. He needs to go to a football game, but. Doesn't seem that bothered. So, uh, what, what is he? I assume he's picking ah, up his there ticket. You go, his ticket. He? So he's also a last-minute ticket buyer. But he's making me a bit angry now, to be honest. If he would be a proper football fan, he would be here one hour before kickoff. But well, that's him. If he if, if he was a proper German football fan, he'd be there two hours before kickoff. Yeah, he puts the show on. Now he's getting well a paper, and he he wants to read or what? What? Oh. He's so 1981, I don't know. Ah, I mean, we're now six, seven minutes into the game and he's having a nap. Unbelievable. And obviously, not too, he, obviously not too impressed with the journalism, it would seem. Yeah, I think that's right too. This is... 
And now he's doing his good old Lucky Balboa style. He's messing about. I mean, he's got a job to do. Oh, look, there are kids. I mean, he's waving to kids, that's good, but he should wave at kids here at the ground. So we're back at the game. Six minutes, minutes played, and it's 2 0 still. Lock versus the invisible opponent. And uh, in a second, I think we'll talk about more. Uh, we talk more about the 1922 uh, stadium opening. But now we're back in city center. Oh god, and I think he's lost. He is lost. This lad, I don't know what, what this. He, he, pro he really should have planned his uh, planned his chip to the ground better. So there's this one. But he's managing to see a few uh, a few of the sites around yeah. Leipzig, which is good to see. The famous Thomas Kirscher. Yeah. I mean, if you're a fan of Bach, then... go there because uh, well, he's he's the man, and that's why this church is so famous. It's because of this guy. You all heard one or two of his pieces, I'm sure. So we were planning to talk about this magnificent wooden main stand. So opening in 19. Yeah, go for it. Did, did, did it always look like that or was it originally oh. smaller? Oh, we have to stop this. again and whew, I, I don't want to comment on this. Well, you go for it. Well, the scenes that nobody wants to see, Matthias, what can yeah, I say? I mean, it's, so, it's 2020 now. The there always seems to be a minority that wants to ruin it for everyone. Well, personally, I like to watch it, but but still, I'm, I'm, <laughs> on, on official capacity, this is this is not good. <laughs> True, truly unacceptable yeah. behaviour. It has nothing to do I with that. I cannot consent. Certainly not. I mean, this is... And once the... Uh, yeah. We'll have to wait for the wait for the the smog to clear. Oh, but it looks so beautiful. Anyway, we are back in city center. Ah, and there's Lucky again. I mean, he's even walking the the wrong way. I mean, I'm from this town. He, 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 is, te he is technically going the wrong way. Yeah. Bloody hell! I mean, what what is he doing? What's he thinking? Maybe not much. I don't know how brains of lions are working exactly, but oh well. I'm not sure that he that he's going to be here tonight. But we were talking about, uh, trying to talk about this magnificent wooden main stand. So it wasn't always like that. Only the middle section was here uh, back in 1922 when uh, we opened the ground. Uh, still, there were 50 to 70,000 people here. No one really knows because the one of the opening games was the German championship final back in the day. Uh, Hamburg playing Nuremberg and uh, there was no final score because the game was abandoned. Four players, I think, uh, of one team got uh, uh, sent off. So, yeah, there weren't enough players on the pitch. So that's a nice and interesting story. And there we see the captain. Oh, he had to clear the ball there. Well, that was, yeah, spe speaking of uh, tough tackling, that was a, that was a vital interception. Look at that, Play clearly good ball. And he's not in a good mood. Cert certainly not. Uh, he he said. No, he said he said that the uh, the opposition haven't had a sniff of goal so far, but they were getting close there, so we had to get in. But yeah, really good tackle, really re really clean, a, ha a hard but fair challenge. Yeah, but this is what, what you have in football often. I mean, when it's two nil, that is not a very comfortable lead. I mean, one goal and then it's all a bit shaky. So. Well, especially if we give the invisible opponent too much space down that right hand side, because uh, that that looked threatening. But we're happy to have this 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 guy as a captain. I mean, he's a brilliant person and obviously a very good footballer. And uh, yeah, that was a good a good tackle and a and a fair one as well. So no yellow card, no foul, nothing. So uh, going back to the woolen main stand. So in 1922, that uh, um, uh, what did I say? The championship final, uh, HSV uh, versus Nuremberg. I think it is still the only or one of not many years in German history where, where there was no champion because there was no decision, because this game in Leipzig was, was uh, the replay. Uh, the first game ended also a draw in Berlin uh, due to the light in the evening. So there were no floodlights back in the day. So that was a bit of uh, German football history for you. And there is a... Well, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad that we've got you there to explain <laughs> it, Matthias, because you're, cer you're certainly the right man. Uh, this, this, this novel... <laughs> 
this ma- this masterpiece that we can see on the pitch. Uh, what's this all well, about? We see a f- sort of family tree here, a very complicated one. That's the history of this football club. And we see here the lads and medals uh, of the third German championship in 1913. Because as it happens, this club uh, is the first German or ever German champion in 1903. And uh, also 1906 and 1913. And it was really complicated after the Second World War, so 1945 till 1963 was a very well complicated uh, period of time for this football club. We'll talk about this later. And then in 1966, uh, we were called Lokomotiv Leipzig for the first time. And this guy was here, uh, Eusebio, so the World Cup uh, uh, record goal scorer of the 1966 England World Cup. And uh, Lok Leipzig won. 3-1 against the well, brilliant Benfica back in the day. That was a big surprise. And, uh, th- well, the the glory night was in 1987, as you can see on the left-hand side, when 120,000 people celebrated uh, the team beating Girondin Bordeaux on penalties uh, going into the European Cup final. You can see the cup on the right-hand side, but Ajax won. Oh, a guy called from Boston scored. And here you can see Lothar Matthäus on the left-hand side. Even he played for Lok Leipzig. Because when the club went bust and uh, was formed new by fans, uh, he played in 2005 in an official uh, well, local cup game. So that is a rich history, I have to say. Some famous faces. Um, if I'm not, if you don't mind me mentioning Matthias, that uh, we, we should say that that book did actually win the Football Book of the Year in Germany. Oh yeah. Uh, and as one That's of true. the uh, as one of the authors of that masterpiece, I should congratulate you. Well done. Well, thank you very much, and it came a bit as a surprise uh, for me as well, because uh, I mean. St- how, how long did it take? <sighs> well, with planning and all, two up two to three years, you can you can say. Uh, but it was very interesting and uh, in the end brilliant I mean it's a book about the football club I grew up with and uh, I love so I mean what what more can happen to you so so that's brilliant and I was also in contact with a lot of uh, people from from England or Britain itself because also the history of our football club or relation with English and British football is uh, a special one I might say so from 1902 up to now we played many many games against uh, teams especially from from england and it started on very early so before world war one uh, we played the the famous amateur teams uh, the likes of corinthians and uh, casuals and but but also the early professional football clubs you know spurs uh, middlesbrough Barnes, Barnsley, i think uh, so yeah and we'll talk about that later because i think there's one guy still missing and well, messing about. And this is our little lion, Loki. We see him here at a lock sponsor who sells Opal. So I think he's not going to a tram now. He is planning to go on a sort of Uber, <laughs> you could say. And he's saying hello to Markus Krug. Maybe one or two people of you don't know him. He is the record player of, let's say, the new era of Lok Leipzig. So he played 10 years here from 2009 to 2019. And uh, well, they like each other pretty much. I mean, he was here for so long, so a decade. That's why I think they know each other very, very well. But he insists to drive the car. Because before uh, Robert Sickert, we, we've seen him uh, defending very well. He was the team captain. So he's known around in, in, in Leipzig and I'm pretty sure he knows the way to the ground then well this guy obviously doesn't. Oh what's what's he on about again? He's putting a show on, isn't he? He's he's not making he's not making things easy. Uh, it looks like looks like Marcus Cook just wants to get to the game. Um, obviously he, yeah. he he's late as well. Well, Marcus Krug still got the mindset, he's focused. And Loki, well, is he the Neymar of the mascot world? Could you, could you say that? I'm not sure. So there's more show, more, more show than... Oh, and they're saying goodbye. And we're back. And the football ground. 
16 minutes in, it's 2-0, good lead, and we were talking about the relation of uh, a British and English football and uh, our club, or VfB Leipzig, up to 1945. Then strange and crazy years, maybe we can talk about the GDR and uh, East German football. Well, it's, it's true that there's probably very few clubs in Germany, if not in the world, with as, as complicated a history um, as, as, Lo as Lokomotiv Leipzig. Um, I think it's confusing for a lot of people in Leipzig themselves. Um, it was certainly confusing for, for me <laughs> um, when, I, w w when I got to know the club. And... Um, However, that's probably also one reason to buy the book. The book explains <laughs> it quite well. So, and and um, to come here and, yeah. and uh, feel what's what's going on here and to see a football match yeah. when it's well when it's possible again, of course. We don't know that yet when that's going to be. We did. Uh, but yeah, just just the numbers. But I think to put it to put it simply, Lock Leipzig do see themselves as the uh, as the direct uh, ancestors of the first ever yeah. champions, the VFB Leipzig. And here we go. Bit more, bit more match action. Good pass in midfield. He's gone for it. I can't believe he went for it from so far out. And there's someone quite happy. <laughs> Paul Schinke, what a finish. Oh, Paul, Wahnsinn, Great, Ding. Hast du den unsichtbaren Torwart gesehen? Das jetzt so etwas schade, wie er es gemacht hat. Ein bit exhausted, I think. Mir, muss ich schon mal sagen. He says, he says uh, I didn't see anyone also in goal, so I went for it. And what more do you want? It's gone in. That's a brilliant idea. I mean. He's got the skills, definitely, because, I mean, where did he learn to play football like that? Of course, here at the football club. Then he went on to one or two other clubs and then he came back one or two years ago, I'm not sure. Yeah, but also a brilliant football player and one of many, many who started their, their great careers here. So uh, if you are a big City fan, you are not, I know, Matt, but others, uh, Uwe Reusler, maybe you heard of him. I mean, he learned to play football here, so that's worth mentioning, I guess. And there's, yeah, 3 0, 18 minutes. So uh, it's confident, well, it's, a, it's a good lead. Um, I'm quite pleased. So this is looking like a really, really strong lead to take into the second leg. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know where the invisible opponent does play. What's, what's the country like? Is it uh, invisible, <laughs> who, who invisible knows? land? Who knows? Or what, what's it called? Who knows? But it's going well so far. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm quite happy. I mean, Three, three really good finishes, really. L l lots of variety in the play. <laughs> well, as you can see, and I think. And it, it looks like the coach, Mickey Adler, is, uh, is, is pleased with, uh, with, with what he's seeing. Da müssen wir ganz kurz stören. Also 3-0 in 18 Minuten. Also ist der Drops jetzt hier gelutscht? 3-0, sensationell, 18 Minuten. Das Kakuch ist gegessen, der Gegner ist überhaupt nicht zu sehen. Die sind überhaupt nicht auf dem Platz. Meine Mannschaft, sensationell. 3-0. Strong straight statement there. Yeah, well, he also played football here uh, up to the age of, I think it was 18, and then he went on to, well, like Nuremberg and, and other teams and played Bundesliga and also the second and third stage in, in German football. And then he came back, not last summer, but the summer before, to play his last season as a player. And now he's the assistant uh, manager or coach of the first team. So, yeah, many players are coming back, which is a good sign, I think. It seems to happen quite regularly at Lock Leipzig, actually, as, as far as I can tell. I think that says a lot about the club, um, with the pl pl players and coaches who go away for whatever reason, but often come back. So um, I think the Borussia Mönchengladbach coach, um, Marco Rosa, Marco Rosa was, also, was also back in Leipzig recently, wasn't he? Yeah, he still lives here. So uh, he's working for Gladbach, but he lives here. And we can see uh, this lion again. And I've got not a good feeling. Yeah. So he's outside. He's, he's, he's got to the stadium, but it looks like he might have gone to the wrong stadium. Yeah, so maybe he was watching football 30 years ago when we when we actually played in the Central uh, Stadion or Central Stadium. But the game tonight is here on our on our real ground. So this guy is. I think he I think he's made a sensible decision to uh, to to walk away from that particular yeah, stadium. Yeah, he did, but, but he, he lost it. I think. I mean, he is not in his right mind at the moment, but. 
And he's not he's not even started chicken yet. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, I mean, it's not our problem. We've seen three goals. We've seen a, a brilliant tackle so far. Some uh, some flares, which I still hmm, don't want to mention it. And uh, we. No, that's that's not 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 behaving that we can do. <laughs> yeah, nicely put. Um, so we. We're starting to talk about the GDR and the the complicated uh, story with football or with the society in general. Because after the Second World War, yeah, no football club was allowed to exist anymore, or no sports club in general. Well, not not in uh, not well, yeah, in all of Germany, but especially not in East Germany, where the uh, the the, Rus the Russians and the Soviet Union didn't believe that it was good to have clubs continuing. And when when football clubs did return, they were often connected to to cut to various industries, weren't they? Um, yeah. And Leipzig Wait. being uh, an historical railway hub um, with a uh, an important railway industry. Um, that's uh, where we can trace the name of locomotive. Yeah, to. I mean that's that's the reason. Yeah, so that's why we are called locomotive. And all the ones who were connected more to, to uh, security and police or policing are the Dynamo, Dynamo teams. You might have heard this, Dresden. Well, what, 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 one of them, Dynamo Dresden, are currently Division 2, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Um, although they weren't doing too well before the, before the coronavirus interrupted things. And, um, yeah, but, but in this, uh, in, this GDR... In, this, in, this, in the same league as Lokomotiv Leipzig, we have BFC Dynamo as well, so the old Dynamo Berlin, who were actually the known as the old Stasi team, weren't they? So they were back, backed by the secret police. Yeah, back, back in the day, yeah. Um, <laughs> That's why they, they won um, yeah. 10 GDR championships in a row. Surely not. Surely it was purely down to footballing ability and talent. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, you can ask around here. They were always so good but yeah one or two things might have helped but we don't want to yeah also <laughs> they, 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 they've also been f busily fundraising <laughs> during the uh, during but, the coronavirus crisis but we don't uh, want to talk about uh, the Schiebermeister as we say here in Germany uh, we want to talk about luck I think <laughs> that's a good decision and there's Lucky again in a completely wrong part of town but in a, but, but a nice place actually, the Josef pub, I can see. Uh, it's run by one of the club officials. But it's closed, but Loki is still trying to get in and there we can see an Olaf Winkler. I think he's seeing that Loki is outside and he's got a bit of a problem. This, this, this must be his first customer in five weeks. <laughs> so we can see, yeah. Okay, so uh, he secretly left the, let in there. I think the toilet is the place he wants to go. Seems so. Well, still, if I'm not wrong, it's like 10k oh, or 15k away from our football ground. So I'm not sure what he's doing. Well, he's going to need a bit of energy for the uh, for the rest of his journey. But it looks I... like he's uh, look, looks like he's stocking up. Yeah, and it's oh yeah, there's no rush for him there. Bloody hell. But I can honestly say, Josef Hell, the beer we can see here, it's worth a stop, certainly. Is it a beer, is it a beer you recommend, Matthias? Uh, I, I, can, I can really recommend. I can recommend the place and the beer. But I don't know if I can recommend the behavior of this lion here. He's supposed to be here from kickoff. Hmm. Anyway. Coming back from lions to, to living people, uh, we can see here the... Uh, Tw 25 minutes played. Oh yeah, huh? and still 3-0. I mean, not much much going on on the pitch, and we can see the... Uh, there's uh, the opponents, as you can see, manager and all. There. Not much happening there. Yeah, obviously, uh, yeah, having a good chat. Obviously, they, have, they have to change something. 3-0 down for 25 minutes, and... Uh, well, I, I, I wonder if they uh, make any tactical changes to get them through to half time. Well, I can't see anything so far, but okay, we'll see. I mean, still, still a lot of time, more than an hour to go to the end of the game. But we were talking about the GDR and uh, this uh, period of time. I think a lot of English, especially English football fans, uh, know Lokomotiv Leipzig from because uh, we played a lot of games against uh, teams from there. 
I mean, it started even before we were called Lok Leipzig in 1965 when we played Leeds United and uh, guys like uh, uh, Jackie Charlton played in the opposition. I mean, he's world champion 1966, as you all know. And, uh, well, later on, the campaign 1973, 1974 um, was a very good one because uh, we, as Lok Leipzig, reached the UEFA Cup uh, semi-final, which was very good for a GDR uh, team at the time. And we've beaten uh, uh, Wolves and Ipswich Town, which is not bad, I think. And But in semi-final, Spurs were too strong. But in their squad were two, another two uh, world champions of 1966. I was, actually, uh, I was actually able to speak to one of the Tottenham fans who went to that game. Um, that was an interesting experience that he had. Uh, going behind the iron curtain at the time. Oh, but we're on the on the pitch now, and there we oh pitch invade. What is going on tonight here? First the flares, and then then this behaviour here. I don't know what to say to be clearly, honest. Clearly, cl clearly, someone's been in lockdown for too long. Yeah, this is. I mean, we're watching a beautiful game of football, and then someone is trying to ruin it. But as you can see, the referee didn't say anything. The it's always it's always this minority, Matthias. Always always yeah. ruining it for, for for those for those true lovers those of football. People who but, um, trying to destroy football. What we say? Yeah, he's he's been he's been locked up in the house for five yeah. weeks. He's, uh, he he needs to get it out. Is, it is sad, but okay. Uh, going going back to uh, the football. I mean, nineteen seventy four, a good year for football. And you you were saying that uh, one Spurs supporter was in Leipzig and he didn't feel that welcome. Yeah, yeah. As I, yeah, as I was saying, he was one of the 150 or 120 fans who was actually allowed to travel from, from London to Leipzig at the time. Um, and he said that he um, didn't actually see any of the city. As soon as they entered East German airspace, the pilot forced them to uh, to put the shutters down on their windows so they couldn't even look out into Eastern Germany. Um, and they were shuttled to the stadium on buses with blacked out windows. And they were shuttled back and they were flown flown off out of the country again at full time so they saw nothing of the city oh, looks like a sounds like a spy film to me bob we're back on the street and we can see an, an exhausted lucky mascot maybe there was maybe it wasn't only one beer so he's at a pharmacy now well, what's he doing now he looks like he's uh, yeah got a bit of a headache uh, okay. Oh, is it? <laughs> it's also oh, yeah, but these days, of course, sanitizer first, as we know, disinfect. It's what we've all been doing for several weeks now, and before that, of course. And this mask as well. Brilliant, but I think he needs something, so he's not going there only to disinfect his hands, I suspect. So he's got something with his heart. What's wrong? I think he is. Oh yeah, this this is a German medicine called Doppelherz, which uh, helps um, if you get a bit overexcited. And this is what can happen here at the football ground. We know that, and we've seen it in the last couple of minutes. I mean, three goals, pitch invasion, and uh, you've seen it. So that was maybe a wise choice. But still, half an hour late. That that is not that's not a German lion. I can tell you. <laughs> no, certainly not. So back here, and I mean, it looks beautiful. This is what I have to say. I mean, even for me as a hard football fan. But it must be said, there's very little to see on the pitch. But um... Yeah, on the pitch, there's, there's not much going on. And we, we would say if there was uh, something worth mention, but at the moment it isn't. Uh, but it's a beautiful night and the floodlights look magnificent. So if you're in love with football, you've... Uh, you're in heaven now I think I'm pretty sure or pretty close to heaven that's for sure so and there we are back in the car <laughs> Marcus Krug as you can see it's like he's got a nice uniform so he knows what he's doing he's the driver the designated one but I'm not sure if either of them has got the directions right Maybe, I mean, in, in, the, in the German or in the Leipzig, uh, what's it called, crest of the city? 
or logo. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the coats, coats of the arms, coats yeah, of arms. that's the word. Uh, there is a lion, so that's why our mascot is a lion, but... I mean, judging from how he's behaving, maybe we'll change it next season to, I don't know, a goose or something. Because this lion, he's not doing a good job so far. I mean... Did, um, did, did, did Marcus Krug not want to play tonight? I thought this would be a game that uh, he'd want to get involved in. Uh, obviously a tough, a, a, big, a tough rivalry against the Yeah, but, but I mean, he officially uh, uh, went to another club last season. Uh, went to League, I don't know, oh, I don't want to spoil it, 7 or 6. So he's playing even lower league football now. So his time has ended as Lok Leipzig. But as, as record player, I think that's, that's okay. So, but still, I'm not sure what they're doing. They seem to argue as well. It's it's not a very good team, <laughs> these two. I think um, I think Lockie has clearly spent too much time in the in the Joseph pub. Yeah. I mean, it's all about showing off, messing about. Ah, oh, there you can see the monument to the Battle of Nations, which is very close to the ground now. And, yeah, you can, uh, actually, you can actually see it from the from the stadium, can't you? Actually. So that, I mean, if, if you're in Leipzig again, uh, we have mentioned the zoo, the city centre, but also this this monument is very interesting. If you're from the well, British world, uh, I have to say, then you don't know about the story. But in uh, 1813, Napoleon was here defeated as well. Not only Waterloo. So come here and find out uh, the details about that. It must be said that the uh, the local Saxons were actually on Napoleon's side, were they not? Until they decided a couple of days into the battle to change teams. I, I, I think until the last day, even. So this is not okay. very, not a proud thing to say about Saxony. They they changed sides. Uh, uh, well, the they made they, they made the right decision in the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's correct. In the end, uh, you mentioned it right. So come here. Uh, obviously come to this very nice football ground and then see the other sides and uh, as we said before on the pitch Locke has got everything under control still which is a bit of a surprise yeah. I thought for a minute there with, 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 with this sort of performance Locke would have absolutely no problems in the in Division 3 Yeah, and we were still waiting what's going to happen next season so we're as I mentioned almost uh, in the lead and no one knows what's going to happen, but here we're on the pitch again, and there's Sasha Pfeffer, one of the older players, uh, you might say. A couple of stepovers. He's oh, left. The, he's left the defence for dead. That's oh. clever. That's clever. What a clever finish! Yeah! Clever finish. You might call it a bit arrogant, but perfectly executed. Beautiful ball control. Come here, Sascha. Come. Okay, Ein toller nice hier im Stadion. Taking a bit of the risk. Meine Herren, uh, hast du dir was aufgehoben hier für die für die letzten yeah. Minuten der ersten Halbzeit? Also man muss das ganz schön noch mal einen rausholen. Ja, yeah, also absolut. Jetzt für so. He says that he, uh, he, he, he's done it for the crowd. So a, a crowd pleasing moment for the hundred and sixty thousand. Yeah, or more. I mean, we don't know. And uh, as I mentioned before, still, till half time, you can buy tickets online. To Go for it. As you can see, it's worth it. And it's 4 0 now. Lock Leipzig for the invisible opponent. Nil. And it's 10 minutes till half time, so. It's not a tight one. <laughs> uh, like I said, I'm interested to see what changes the invisible opponent makes at half time because they've been absolutely torn apart in the first half. Uh, Lock have been clinical going forward and really, really tight at the back. And uh, no wonder the coach is pleased. I mean, you and me, we're in football for one or two days now. We've seen a lot of things. Even a 4 0 is not always enough. Yeah, but we all, we, all, we all know that, that Locke are capable of this on the day. <laughs> <laughs> there is Locke again. So now he's at uh, the Park Hotel Diani, which is a hotel right next to the football ground. So He's almost there, but it's not that he's going straight to the ground. No, he makes a quick stop. And I think it is an international word we can read here now. Beer garden. It's the, it's the, the, the next stop in Lockie's match day routine. I wonder what he's going to do now. I, I, I thought he had enough, to be honest. But... Well. 
So, I mean, maybe it's recreating uh, what a proper football fan should do before a game of football, but as I said before, a game of football, not during. <sighs> I mean, yeah, I can, I can understand why he drinks that lovely stuff, but... Look at the time, mate. Look at your watch. Oh, he hasn't got one. Uh, and he still doesn't seem bothered that he's too late. Obviously, he's not, he's not quite heard the, the roar of the crowd yet. Uh, maybe he doesn't want to. I don't know. Can lions hear very well or smell? I, I don't know. Not an expert. Uh, but back, back to the main business here. 38 minutes played. And, so uh, what, what, what's, what's the situation with, uh, with, the, with Division 5 at the moment, Matthias? Obviously, it's on. It's, well, it's on, complicated. It, it, it's on pause. Uh, Locker second with the game in hand. Um, well, yeah, what, but, what's, the, what, what's the plan? But even if it uh, wouldn't be on pause, uh, it would be strange because in a normal world, if you finish first in your division, you go up, you get a promotion. But in Germany, in the uh, fourth tier, it is not like that. You have to play uh, another playoff game. So there are six leagues, but only four spots to go up. So. Uh, well, you can all do the math. So four teams have to play for two spots. And, uh, well, this is complicated enough, but it's getting more complicated now because no one knows what's going to happen. Is the, the season going to finish? Is it not? Who's going to go up? We all don't know. At the moment, at least. So, uh, oh, at, least yeah. at least Lucky's finally made it to the ground, though. Yeah, so he's outside the ground now. Oh, that's, that's good. He's got, got, his, his ticket. got his ticket still, not lost it, always important. Yeah, and he's almost in, but, oh yeah. Almost, so, there's going to be a security check on him. I mean, I would do that, because he's been drinking and we all know what, what he can be like when he does that. Yeah. That's a very good thing that he's been checked. Because I think he's got one or two things with him, and I'm not sure he can bring them in. No. Is that is that, is that, is that his packed lunch? Yeah, uh, it looks like it. Okay. Shovel. Yeah. Why not? Okay. So, so that that's where that's where all the toilet roll in Leipzig went. <laughs> okay, table tennis. Uh, he's not very pleased. Bloody hell. So this is his idea of a of a nice football evening, bringing. Oh, he's got with him. Oh, he's, he's brought the Division 4 trophy. Okay, bloody hell. This is interesting. So that's that's half the Sioux he brought with him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, lucky. Well, this line is very special, but eventually he made it, so he's inside the ground, but still not really here, so... It seems like half of the things he brought is ladder, his spade, his chainsaw. I mean, I know that Locke fans do come and do a lot of work in the stadium, non-match non days, but he seems to have got his days mixed up. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not sure if... I mean, he's been in lockdown for too long, probably, or maybe he's got new food as I said before I'm not an expert on animals anyway so yeah we're nearly at half time and we were talking about uh, uh, what's going to happen uh, with promotion or not so we don't know and the uh, officials don't know the league doesn't know so what would be well, your we, what would be your preferred solution Macias? my preferred solution would be that we go up because we're in first position because we've got one game in hand and got the same points as the team who is really in the lead if you know what i mean so yes a lot would have to avoid losing the game in hand uh, yeah but if you divide uh, games played and points you've got well luck is the best team that would be the fairest way i think to to do it and uh, the only possible way, because as I can see, you cannot play in the next couple of days and weeks and months. And they see, there's the captain and he scores. So he's not only good in defending, also good in goal scoring and gymnastics. Or what was that? 
really good finish. Ficke, dass du in der Luft gefährlich bist, ist ja bekannt, aber dass du im Strafraum so sträflich really alleine gelassen wirst, was war da los? So ein absolutes Strafraumungeheuer wie mich darf man nie alleine lassen. Ja, yeah, as, as he says. Bestraft. Ein Gegner da, alle unsichtbar heute. He says, you, you, can't, you can't leave a fox in the box like me alone like that. I'm not sure if his teammates would agree with that. He's a, he's a defender by trade. But a good finish, a good finish all the same. 5-0, Matthias. Outstanding scenes. That is, I mean, what we've been seeing here in only 45 minutes was outstanding. I mean, we didn't know what to expect, but there was there was loads of stuff we've we've seen so far. And I think there's. Uh, I think it goes to show how important scouting is. Um, Lock have obviously had a really really good look at the opposition today. Um, so they knew exactly what to expect. There we go. And there we go. They've thrown in the towel. So that's interesting because at the same second uh, the halftime whistle was blown, uh, that guy threw the towel and I think it was the manager of the opponent. So yeah, yeah we, 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 we haven't seen much of him today, but he's they look like they're throwing the towel. Look, they look like yeah. they, don't want, they don't want to continue. So, yeah, they're going off and the referee is yes, indicating that's it. So halftime is at the same time final score 5 0. Well, that is surprising. And Ah, and look who's here. It is Loki, the mascot. There he is. Well, he's going to be pleased in a couple of seconds. And he's not going through. No, he's dancing. He's... Oh. He's, uh, he's he's missed five goals. He's missed 45 minutes. He's missed... Um, he's missed the pyrotechnics. He's missed the streaker. So he's, he's in for a treat now. Yeah, I think he realizes now what's going on. Yeah, Loki, there you go. Be focused. Time management, I think, is the, the correct word here. Yeah. There we go. I mean, but we had a very, very, I mean, apart from Lucky, we all and the more than, I don't know what it is now, 170, 180,000 people uh, in our virtual stands, they had a brilliant night. I mean, the 8th of May 2020 will go down in football history as a odd, but also historic evening. Yeah, definitely historic. Very, very enjoyable, Matthias. Yeah, well, I, I had great fun too. So uh, let's recap all that. So five goals, starting with Vibudulu, going to Siana Schinke from, well, half line, I think. Yeah, all the way from the halfway line. That was a great finish. Yeah. Then Pfeffer, that massive skill. And, you know, <laughs> for, me, for, me, I, for me, the man of the match has to be the captain, Zicker, though. That yeah. performance at the back and popping up at the, at the other end with the goal. Uh, an all-around captain's performance. Well, that is, well, it is magnificent. And as, as I said, I mean, more than 126 years of uh, club history, but we haven't seen something like that so far. I mean, we've seen a lot. Two uh, world wars and... Uh, you know GDR and everything and bankruptcy and cups and whatnot but here nothing like that so yeah historic I would call it historic and interesting and um, I'm happy that you were here with me thank you so much to everyone who's, uh, who's helped out and uh, yeah we're going to the press conference now I think meine Damen und Herren herzlich willkommen zur Pressekonferenz nach dem Rekordfußballspiel Lok Leipzig gegen den unsichtbaren Gegner Halbzeitstand 5 zu 0, Endstand demzufolge auch 5 zu 0 und das vor über weit über 150.000 virtuellen Zuschauern. Wir begrüßen beide Trainer, den Gästetrainer vom unsichtbaren Gegner und Wolfgang Wolf und wie immer hat zuerst das Wort der Gästetrainer. Wir danken für das Statement und äh, natürlich nun auch die Einschätzung zum Spiel von unserem Trainer Wolfgang Wolf. Ja, hallo zusammen. Ich habe in meiner langen Laufbahn noch nie vor so vielen Zuschauern gespielt und äh, ich muss mich bedanken bei allen Unterstützern. Und es war auch schwierig, sich auf das Spiel vorzubereiten, obwohl wir ja klar 5 zu 0 gewonnen haben. Äh, den Gegner zu beobachten war schon schwierig, meine Scouts 
haben nicht so genau gewusst, was auf uns zukommt und ich auch nicht, aber die Mannschaft hat das hervorragend umgesetzt. Wir sind sehr gut ins Spiel gekommen, ja, haben den Gegner dominiert und haben auch in der Höhe, denke ich, verdient gewonnen. Wolfgang, jetzt haben wir weit über 150.000 äh, Zuschauer erreicht. Das ist ein, eine, eine super Sache. Äh, nichtsdestotrotz, was ist anders als bei einem normalen Spiel? Ja, erstmal muss ich mich bedanken für die Unterstützung ja, in, äh, der finanziellen Art. Das ist nicht selbstverständlich, das ist ganz klar. Aber was fehlt uns? Uns fehlen eigentlich die Zuschauer, uns fehlt der Geruch des Rasens, das Grüne, das Grüne unter den Füßen. Und äh, ich hoffe, dass wir so schnell wie möglich mit unseren Fans im Rücken wieder dahin zurückkommen. Ja, Wolfgang, dann wie immer äh, die Frage an die Pressevertreter. Gibt es Fragen? Das ist wie immer nicht der Fall. Dann vielen Dank an beide Trainer. Wir schließen dann die Pressekonferenz des ersten FC Lokomotive Leipzig und schalten nochmal zum Präsidenten Thomas Löwe, der noch ein paar abschließende Worte zu unserem Rekordfußballspiel hat. Vielen Dank. Liebe Lokfans und Unterstützer, Fußball pur ist der Markenkern des ersten FC Lokomotive Leipzig. Und ja, es stimmt, ohne euch, ohne die Fans, kann unser bruno Blacher stadion welches für viele der schönste Ort der Welt ist, seinen Zauber nicht entfalten. Ihr fehlt, ohne euch macht Fußball überhaupt keinen Sinn. Aber die Situation in Deutschland und in der Welt ließ sich nicht ändern. Und deshalb haben wir mit unseren Fans gemeinsam beschlossen, eine Zeitreise durch unsere einzigartige und aufregende 126-jährige Geschichte zu unternehmen. Und ihr habt alle mitgemacht. Wir haben in den letzten Wochen Zuschauerrekorde geknackt und dabei unzählige Glücksmomente unserer Vergangenheit wieder aufleben lassen. Und es hat sich gezeigt, es gibt sehr, sehr viele Menschen, die diesen Verein lieben. Für einige ist es sogar die Liebe des Lebens. Und wir haben gemerkt, wir haben sehr viele Freunde in der ganzen Welt. Ihr habt uns sehr geholfen und dafür bedanken wir uns von Herzen. Verbundene mit der Hoffnung, dass wir uns bald alle wieder hier im bruno Blacher stadion gesund und munter wiedersehen und auf den Fußballplätzen dieser Welt wünschen wir euch vor allem Gesundheit. Bleibt der Loksche treu und hoffentlich bis bald. What a night. What a game, what a attendance. I mean, special, wasn't it? Yeah, very special. But um, like we said, it's not the first time that uh, the lock supporters have, have banded together and uh, gone the extra mile when their club's been in difficulty. Something that really makes the club stand out. Uh, something that makes it stand out to me, certainly. So, yeah, partly amazing, the uh, the... The, the amount of money that's been raised, the amount of support that's come in from all over the world, um, but also partly not surprising because that's exactly what uh, it's exactly what Lock Lives are going about as far as I'm concerned. So, well done to everyone and thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for watching, and uh, we hope we'll see each other very soon in a real stadium with real fans, with real football, maybe with one or two pints, and uh, that'd be great. Definitely, so, uh, definitely, Matthias. See, see you soon in Leipzig. <laughs> see you soon and uh, have a good night, everyone.
willkommen in Hamburg. Ein großer und zukunftsorientierter Club. Wir wollen begeistert den Fußball spielen, der unsere Fans mitreißt und vor allem wollen wir diesen Weg mit uns gehen. 